Uncle Job Seneb, Life, Prosperity, and Health. Uh, welcome to another section of the Husia. Today we're going to focus on the book of Knowing of Creation. It's actually the first book in the Husia. And we're going to look at Ra's description of his creation. But we're only going to look at the Neturu that are mentioned in this section or mentioned in this passage. And the first uh, depiction here we have, this is how you would write uh, Neturu in a plural sense. You would write three of these Netur symbols. And right underneath, this is something extra. This is a word Neb, and it means Lord. And it, so it's Lord of the Neturu, or as they would say in, in Western terms, uh, Lord of the gods or king of the gods. So let's uh, get on here. Now, this first uh, slide uh, shows the Neturu in the boat of Ra. And uh, the boat of Ra is conceived as a, a vessel that is traveling through the sky and it's Ra's rotation around the earth and through the cosmos. And it has each uh, netter here in his boat. And I'm going to say it probably is the origin of uh, that uh, song, Swing Low, Sweet Chariot, Coming Forth to Carry Me Home, because a lot of our ancestors wanted to be in that boat of Ra, to ascend to that boat of Ra, when they made their transition into the netter world. And uh, something else I'd like to point out, these oars here are who and Sia. And so this boat of Ra traveling across the sky, this uh, rectangular object is a representation of the sky. This boat is guided by authoritative utterance and exceptional insight. So now let's uh, deal with the term netter. Uh, Dr. Theophil Binga um, gives a brilliant definition of what a netter is. In his book, African Philosophy, is found on page 541. He says, originally, the word netter meant the awakening of higher consciousness within the primordial essence of noon. Created beings uh, extend the creator's creation. And he gives the example, as the sun is, uh, is ceasingly, ceaselessly uh, born and reborn from its own energy. And then he uh, punctuates that statement by saying, this is a philosophy that exalts life in the name of the cosmic order. And so uh, if you get a chance, it's a, it's, it's a long book, but it's a good book. And if you're interested in African philosophy, if you're interested in uh, the uh, writings of our ancestors, this is another excellent book, Dr. Theophia Obenga's book, African Philosophy, The Pharaonic Period. Now the first netter is Ra, and this is how we write Ra in Medu Netur. And Ra is usually depicted with a falcon's head, the sun disk with a uh, serpent uh, on the side. Again, the netters are usually depicted carrying Ankh, the symbol of life, and the Waz staff, symbol of authority. So now Ra, its form is used to represent the midday sun. Ra is generally associated with the sun or at noontime. And sometimes he's referred to as the most high. And so when the sun is in the um, noontime sky, that's when it's at its height. And that's where we get the term the most high. Next, uh, Netur is Keper. Keper is known as the bringer into being. It represents the morning sun as it rises. It is associated with the dung beetle or sometimes referred to as a scarab. And here's the dung beetle here um, and he he, he gathers the dung from uh, the various animals uh, and, and puts it in a ball. And then 
eggs are laid in that ball. And it's, as the dung is pushed across the sky, our ancestors uh, thought that uh, it's, it, you know, when they saw that, that uh, ball of dung being pushed across the earth, uh, they recognize that as a symbol of the sun being pushed across the sky. And so that's how he became associated with it. It is a masculine netter. And um, when you look at it, the overview of looking at the beetle, it resembles an overview of the human skull. And that's probably why it means to bring into being because it all starts in your head. You know, all of the concepts that, that you come up with start in your head. Kepper also has to do with rebirth. And here uh, in this Medu Nature, uh, this is coming uh, out of uh, King Tut's uh, jewelry. Uh, here we see the, uh, again, the, the Medunetra for Neb or Lord, and then we have Keper Ra, Lord of the bringer into being of Ra. Our next netter uh, that's, that's focused on in this passage is uh, Mat, and the whole of existence is based upon Mat. Mat in English is translated into seven words. It means truth, means justice, means righteousness or right order. Truth, it manifests itself in the individual as truth. It manifests itself in the society as justice. And it manifests itself in um, nature as the normalcy of phenomenon, i.e., Again, to use the example, the sun rose again. Ma'a is so um, precise that you can calculate 10,000 years from now what time the sun is going to rise and set. That's how precise Ma'a is. Now, the, here are the other uh, words that it comes out to mean. It means balance, harmony, propriety, and reciprocity. And here's some other depictions of Mott. And you can always tell Mott because she's uh, in a feminine form. And she always has this single ostrich feather on her head. And this is how you write Mott in Medu Nature. Mott is a feminine netter. It's represented by the single ostrich feather, as we said. And this single ostrich feather appears in the depiction of the judgment scene. So Ma'at, we see the scribe Ani or Anai. He's in the, he, he's in the netter world. His heart is placed in this jar. And on the other side of the scale is the feather of truth. And he is judged by the, by the 12 jurors here. This is where we get the judge and the 12 jurors. And Tahuti is writing down each thing that is said. And if, he, if a person does not weigh out, they are uh, swallowed by the eater of the dead. And um, that's all symbolic. All it means is that you did not, you're not really able to, re to uh, return and be among the powers of heaven that you have to repeat again your lessons here on, on this earth plane until you get it right. Now, on this um, slide, we have Mati. It's represented by the two truths, and you can see. Uh, if you look closely, there are two uh, feminine netarus here. And so what that represents is uh, ma'at in the celestial region and ma'at, truth, justice, and righteousness 
on the terrestrial plane of existence. So they're, they're both present as the heart is being weighed. Now, as the heart is being weighed on the feather of truth, on the scale, and we talked about this already, the deceased heart is on one side and the, and the feather of truth is on the other. As it's being weighed, the person that has passed and is being judged is reciting what's known as the 42 Declarations of Innocence. And this is how they appear in the book uh, that's called the Per in Who, or the Book of the Coming Forth by Day. And here, here they are uh, written out in Medunetra. And for our convenience, we have them here in English. And so as that person's heart is being weighed on, against the feather of truth, they're saying, I've not committed sin. I've not committed robbery with violence. I've not stolen. I've not slain men or women. I've not stolen food. I've not swindled offering. I've not told lies, etc. All the way down to 42 declarations of innocence. Our next Neturu is Shu. And Shu uh, is written this way in Medu Nature. And Shu is a uh, masculine Neturu. It's the Netur of air and dryness. It's masculine, as we said. It's depicted as a man with a single ostrich feather on, his, on the top of his head. And he's showed holding up the sky. Sometimes he's pictured with Nut who is the sky, and Geb, who is the earth. So here we have a depiction of creation. So we have Geb at the bottom here, and in between Geb, the earth, and Nut, the sky, we have Shu, and he's holding up Nut, or by the columns of life, the mammary glands and the pelvic regions. And so let me go back here. So if you notice that in the body of Nut or Newt, she has stars, moons, and planets in her body. And then a better depiction of them, it shows here, and this is how you write nut in Medu Nature. She swallows the sun in the evening, and the sun passes through her body, various points, and then is reborn at the pelvic region in the morning. So this is how our Ancestors explain creation. The next uh, Neturu that we'd like to bring up is Tefnut. Tefnut means moisture. It's, um, the name is related to the root Tef, to be moist, to spit, and new uh, sky or waters. And so appropriately, she was the personification of the moisture of the sky. She was a counterpart to Shu and the mother of Geb and Nut. Now this is a nature that many are probably familiar with and uh, the most popular name is Osiris. And Osiris is uh, a Greek form of the name Asar, Wasir, Asar and Hunefer. Hunefer is a word that means the good being. And this is how you write Wasir in Medu Nature. It's the throne with the eye and the glyph designating a masculine um, nature. And he's always pictured in mummy form, usually holding the Stepherd uh, st uh, uh, staff and the um, the uh, flail, and uh, you you're familiar with the uh, Psalms 23, uh, 
Um, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. This is uh, the origins of that. Um, well, Seir was a nature of earth and vegetation. Uh, when he was, uh, uh, sometimes he's called Osiris, it symbolized in his death, the yearly drought, and in his miraculous rebirth, the periodic flood of the Nile and the growth of, of grain. He was a netter, uh, poor Ah, who was believed to have given Kemet civilization. Now, he had a um, opposer, and it was his brother, Set. And this is how we are uh, uh, writing Set in Madunetcher. Uh, he was one of the most ancient uh, of the Kemetic uh, netters, um, and his recognition and his uh, worship goes all the way back to pre-dynastic period. He was a storm netter with strange and frightening events such as eclipses, uh, thunderstorms, earthquakes. He also represented the, the desert, and by that extension, foreign lands beyond the desert. His glyph appears in the comedic words for turmoil, um, confusion, illness, storm, and rage, he was considered very strong, but dangerous and strange. However, he was not always considered to be an evil being. Usually, because we're, you know, programmed in the uh, Judaic Christian uh, philosophy and religion mindset, we think of, you know, uh, God versus the devil. But there are uh, positive aspects even to uh, Set. He was a friend of the dead, uh, helping them to ascend the, to heaven on his ladder. He protected uh, the life, uh, giving, uh, uh, he protected a life, giving an oasis to the desert. He was at sometimes a powerful ally to the Pur'ah. Even he was a powerful ally to Ra himself. Uh, next one is Nebhet, and she was a feminine netter referred to in text going back to the Old Kingdom. Uh, Nephthys is uh, the Greek pronunciation of her name, and, and the name means mistress of the house, and she was associated with uh, the palace, uh, associated with the individual homes. And um, so we have this term, Old Kingdom, and the way that Egyptologists divide up, and they're going by uh, the works of uh, Manetho or Marian Jehuti. Um, and so he divided up the, um, the, the dynasties, so-called dynasties, into various periods. And so the Old Kingdom is referred to as the first through sixth dynasty, uh, then from the 7th through the 12th dynasty is referred to as the Middle Kingdom. The 13th through 17th is a kind of a chaotic period when the Hyksos and foreigners invade. And then the New Kingdom begins uh, in the 18th dynastic period, and it goes all the way up to the 24th uh, dynastic period. And then the 25th dynastic period is referred to as the Nubian Renaissance. So that's what that reference to the Old Kingdom means. And so those are the netters uh, that we have uh, in the Husea, in the Books of Knowing of Creation. I hope you enjoyed uh, this little refresher for some and introduction to others of the Netaru uh, along the Nile. Hope you enjoyed it. Life, prosperity, and health. Live up.